What's up, Bio? It's Mr. Jones, back again. We're doing a lecture uh, that's really close to my heart, and I think if I had to pick one lecture all year that would that I would choose as my most important one, I think it actually might be this one on nutrition, because I think eating healthily is one of the most important things that you can do. And um, in this lecture, what we're going to do is kind of give you a real basic rundown of the kinds of things you can eat that are healthy for you. Uh, and I want to start off with a, one of my favorite quotes from a, an author named Michael Pollan, who's, who's really sort of well-known in the nutrition field. And he's, he's, his, his uh, philosophy on eating is, eat food, mostly not too much, mostly plants, which is basically saying you want to eat food, meaning natural food. The closer to its natural state, the better. So avoid processed foods like chips and candies and those kinds of things. And then not too much, obviously, because if you overeat, you intake too many calories, and that can lead to, to um, negative things. And then most of what you eat should actually be plants. Um, so you should be eating a lot of plant-based things. Um, meat is, is good for you and okay too, but mostly you should be eating plants. Um, and I already know that this first slide on carbohydrates is going to make me hungry because I love carbs. Uh, hey, hey, what's how up? Are you? Hey, I didn't expect you. Brought you some food. You got some food? Do. Nice. You, what are you up to? Hey, I was just starting the nutrition lecture. Oh, you want to come on in? Yes. Join up. Hi, everybody. Hey, it's Mr. Rogerian. He owns a bag of food. Wow. Yeah, what a good generous guy. Because you're hungry. Food. Oh, I definitely going to be hungry at, with this lecture. All right. So, we're we talking, talking about? about carbs. Speaking of carbs, brought you some bread. That's definitely a carb. I know you're a fan. I love bread. Bread is delicious. That's right. And this bread here looks delicious to me. That does look delicious. Yes. Yeah. All right. So you got some food. That's going to be yeah, perfect for this lecture. Right. All right. So I was just doing carbs and I wanted to uh, talk about a couple things um, about carbohydrates that are kind of important. So first of all, when you think about like where we get most of our energy on a day-to-day -day basis, it's from the carbohydrates we eat, right? I mean, most of the time when you eat, and when most of what we think about as far as like the food we, we eat, it's carbohydrates because they give us all our energy. But the one thing we need to mention is they're not all the same. Uh, something called glycemic index, which is actually a really important term that I want you guys to know. And it differentiates what's a good carb and a bad carb. When I say good and bad, I'm referring to like its health benefits. So for starters, glycemic index, the definition is how quickly a food raises your blood sugar levels. So basically the, the um, higher the, the glycemic index, the quicker it breaks down in your digestive system into sugar, and then that is absorbed and your blood sugar goes up really quickly. So if a food is high glycemic index, it means it's going to absorb sugar faster and spike your blood sugar. So I want to eat foods that are low in glycemic yes, index. Yes, for sure. Such as? Okay, such as, what is that? Is that a sweet potato? I think so. You brought one sweet potato for me? I did. All right. I know you like these. I love sweet potatoes. Yeah. And yeah, sweet potatoes are a little bit lower glycemic than like a regular potato, for example. Um, so yeah, so the difference between high and low glycemic index is actually really important. Um, so some examples you can see here of high glycemics. White bread, white rice, processed snacks, candies, cookies, sodas. The, the rule of thumb for me is the sweeter it tastes, typically the higher the glycemic index. Right? The less sweet it tastes, if it's carbohydrate, the lower the glycemic index which is good because if it's low, it means it raises your blood sugar steadily and doesn't stress your pancreas and release all that insulin that we talked about that could cause diabetes. So if I'm choosing between white rice and brown rice? For sure, better, healthier, and as far as glycemic index, you want to go brown. Brown rice. Because it's less processed. And um, we'll talk about in class what's the difference between white and brown rice, how it's processed. But essentially, you want to go with brown rice just because it's a little bit lower glycemic index, a little healthier. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so any vegetable is a safe bet for carbohydrates and is low glycemic index. Okay, so I'll show you um, a little graph here that I think is kind of cool. So this, the red line shows you how high glycemic index foods affect you over time. So let's say you eat some um, high glycemic food. This kind of gives you an idea of the approximate way that it affects your blood sugar. So it kind of spikes your blood sugar really quickly after you eat it and then drops off. Whereas low glycemic food, you get sort of a, a slower and less high peak, which is actually healthier. I just had some dates before I came here. You were on a date? I, no, no, I had dates. Oh, you had some had dates. dates. I was going to yeah. say, you're, yeah, no, I was not your wife might not be too happy with you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you also might see the term 
So the, the, the scientific term is glycemic index, high and low. But the more like uh, everyday term that people t like to use is complex carbs versus simple carbs. So you might hear that more often. Complex carbs are the better ones for you. So you can kind of see up here at the top, you got there's the sweet potato, some, some uh, whole wheat bread and vegetables and stuff like that. Going to be generally better for you. You want to steer towards these. These guys down here, not very good for you. I'm glad I brought you that sweet potato now. Yeah, it's going to be good. Yeah. Oh, although I will admit the stuff at the bottom tastes really good, mm -hmm. but you got to have discipline. I don't know if we've ever enjoyed anything in the bottom together. You have donuts sometimes at staff meetings. That's true. Fries, maybe? We've Fries. been to In-N-Out together. That's true. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Stay away from this. Yes. I think this is one of the... If you can cut soda no, out, that's a huge, huge, huge thing to do. no good. Yeah. All right. Do you want to talk about fiber? Sure, I can talk about fiber. All right. Okay. So let's see, what do we want to say about fiber? So it's actually not digested and it's actually not absorbed in your bloodstream. So where can we find it? It's found in unprocessed plant foods. Things like fruits. By the way, I brought oh, yeah, you, let me take a look. Brought let me you some you fruits. Check this out. It's good stuff. Oh, this is uh, some figs. That's right. Dried figs. Okay. That's good stuff right there. Um, nice. It's found in beans, lentils, nuts. And it it's there. really yeah, it's good stuff. And it's really important to know that all of these actually protect against heart disease, diabetes, which we talked about in class, uh, obesity, constipation, uh, which Mr. Gannon and I talked about. So when you look at this list of everything here, basically think about which one of these things, you know, when you eat these things, you're actually taking in fiber, right? And that's going to help your system. You just had some, I just gave you some fiber. Some, good, so yeah, some delicious fiber. I helped you protect against heart disease. Appreciate it. That's why I'm a good friend. Mm -hmm. bro. No, you got it. No heart attacks for me. <laughs> All right. Quick, quick checkpoint. You guys can just do this real quick. What are the diff What are some advantages between white versus brown rice? Go ahead and write that down. What do we got next? Oh, we're gonna skip that one. We'll come back to that later. Yeah, let's come back to it. Um. <clears throat> okay. Fats. Do you, what do you think? You want me to take over fats? Yeah, you do fats, and I'll look for some foods that I. How got. about I do healthy fats, and then you do. You do some unhealthy Yeah, fats. sounds good. All right. So healthy fats, the best healthy fats um, that that we know of that are that are really, really beneficial are something called omega-3 fatty acids. What do you got here? Walnuts. Walnuts are a great source of good fats. Yeah. Um, so like you can see here on our list, the places you find those omega-3s are fish. Really good source of, of uh, uh, fat is fish. Soybeans, seeds nuts and avocados. All of those will have good fats for you. And they're good because they actually help your cardiovascular system and your brain function. So they, they help create what's known as HDL, which is a good kind of cholesterol that you want in your body. So the more omega-3s you can have, the better. They're really good for you. And by the way, HDL is high density lipoproteins. That's right. High density lipoproteins. Um, okay. So yeah, you get the... All right. Well, I did bring you this. A little bit of butter. I figured you might want to cook with it. So okay. there you go. So speaking of saturated fats, oh yeah, it's some good stuff. Grass fed. My Grass favorite. fed, that's right. That's what makes everything taste so good. Put that in my coffee. Do you really? Yeah. Oh, good stuff. I haven't, yeah. Maybe try it later. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> All right, so saturated fats is uh, stuff you could find in animal products, such as red meat, uh, butter, like I just brought Mr. Jones, milk, cheese. Speaking of cheese, Mr. Jones. Oh, man. I brought you my favorite that string cheese. String cheese. It's, that's the good stuff right there. Nice. Um, yeah, try that. It's try amazing. This. When combined with high sugar diets, it can actually be linked to heart disease. So the butter I brought you, maybe don't have too much of it. Okay. Maybe just put it in your coffee once in a while. Um, it's okay to have these in moderation, just like Mr. Jones and I are having. And I am I just have an issue with how Mr. Jones is eating his string cheese. Yeah, I know. That's okay. I still love you. I don't do... I, I, no? I you don't have the patience to do that. So for me, I, I just have to basically... Hmm? <laughs> it's just... It looks yeah. so convenient. All right. Isn't it good? I guess it's two different ways people eat the string cheese. That's true. That's right. Okay. So again, in moderation, all this is actually... Okay, but just make sure you don't overdo it. And then just to go back to LDL, remember we talked about HDL, high density lipoproteins, LDL is low density lipoproteins, and it's known as the bad cholesterol. So when someone says, I have high cholesterol, 
the question should be what's high is it ldl or hdl so if it's the ldl then that's a bad thing if it's hdl that's actually a good thing cool good info yeah so i think what we got next is the bad fats these are the ones that you just want to avoid at, at all costs there's really no benefit to them you know so they're called trans fats and trans fats are essentially found just sort of basic don't eat things that are like deep fried or processed and you're going to be pretty much staying clear of trans fats so don't eat um you know unfortunately things like donuts unfortunately even though they're delicious fried chicken french mm. fries anything that is fried is not a good thing because when you heat up oil what ends up happening is you can actually change some of the properties of the oil and it can convert the oil into these trans fats that are so bad for you um, and again these trans fats increase your ldl which isn't good we, we studies have shown that they increase your risk of heart disease and promote cancer just a lot of bad stuff no real reason to eat these um you know it might be fine like every once in a while as a treat but you, these should not be eaten we did that once remember yeah every once in a while Lanchan it's okay. chicken we went to right yeah every once in a while you can get away with it but it should not be by any means a regular part of your diet i agree Protein. All right. I'll let you take Let's over talk protein. About protein. Okay. So I did bring you some protein. Okay. What do you got? All right. Uh, let's see. What do I got? I brought you this. Okay. An All egg. Right. Yes. I brought you uh, this. You know what that is? Is this your homemade yogurt? That is my homemade yogurt. Okay. That wow. is, that I'm is looking forward to trying some stuff. homemade yeah. sugar. I didn't bring you a spoon, so we'll have to get that later. No, that's but okay. anyway, so proteins. Um, basically, as you might remember, proteins are made up of amino acids. So amino acids are the monomers, proteins the polymer. And we have these things called essential amino acids, and our body can't produce them. So they have to be consumed or eaten. And they have, um, when you eat these things, they help with a lot of different functions in our body. So we have two important functions that we listed here for you. Uh, one of them is building and repairing your muscles and creating hormones and enzymes. And as you can see in this picture, lots of different types. So the egg that I just brought, Mr. Jones, um, I did bring you salmon, by the way, but I just put it in your fridge earlier. Oh, nice. Just yeah. popped it in there. Thanks. Popped it in there. I forgot I had this up here on the slide. Oh, that's right. Yeah. And then um, here's some ideal sources. So both Mr. Jones and I really like salmon. Uh, lean chicken is good. Nuts, beans. I didn't bring you any nuts or beans. You did. You brought me those walnuts earlier. Oh, that's right. You're right. Yeah. And then other sources, red meat, which I, I generally try to stay away from red yeah. meat. Yeah, I know? like it once in a while, but I, I would say I go towards fish or chicken more often. Yeah, I agree. Eggs. Um, I know we both like hard boiled boiled eggs mm -hmm. and then uh, dairy like I just brought you too. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Look next. I think we got um oh yeah. So those the so carbohydrates, uh fats and proteins are what we can call the macronutrients, the things that are like really, really important um that you have to have all the time. Um and also provide a lot of really important functions. What we call micronutrients are things that are also really important and required in your diet. And um but they don't they don't supply any like energy or anything like a carbohydrate, protein, or lipid does. They're sort of a more like accessory. They help out on the side. Um, and two of those are vitamins and minerals. And basically, the way to think about vitamins and minerals is that they support your body system and help increase the function of your body. Um, and a lot of times people will take vitamin or mineral supplements, like little pills, you know. That's okay, but it's actually way better to eat food that contains them like oranges which are delicious they're kind of small. there are these are tiny oranges yeah it's okay um and then blueberries as well blueberries brought you some blueberries nice. yeah um so blueberries are another great source of vitamins and minerals we'll actually talk about blueberries in a second as well they also have something else that's really important but um vitamins and minerals are essentially really important for the function of enzymes bone strength and your immune system um, and like i said try and get these more in your diet naturally rather than like just eating unhealthily and then like taking a vitamin pill and saying, oh, now I got my vitamins because I ate a, a vitamin pill. Uh, it doesn't really work that way. They're absorbed better from your food rather than as just a pill. And uh, do you want to finish with the antioxidants sure, here? that's right. Well, I'll do that. I brought you some other things. Here's a... Well, th okay. <laughs> it says colorful, but when it says right. colorful, it doesn't mean like this kind of color. No. We <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I also brought you this. I don't know if you can tell what that is. More colorful. More colorful. I don't think you're getting the right you idea. You said colorful, right? I so did, but I didn't you. mean like 
dyed, like processed and dyed gummy bears or Cadbury cream eggs. Got it. They're okay. delicious, but they're not what we mean by colorful. Good to know. What do we mean by colorful? So we're really talking about colorful fruits and vegetables. So really anything like blueberries, blueberries. or tangerines or anything that you see on this slide right here. Um, when you eat a salad, you know, what are the stuff that you put in there? Bell peppers, broccoli, I see a delicious mango sitting there. That looks like there. a great basket. I would love to be Yeah, in. so that watermelon is calling my name. Huge fan of watermelon. <laughs> so antioxidants are found in these colorful fruits and vegetables, and they actually protect against cancer, aging, and the effects of stress. Nice. And then uh, we have something called phytochemicals. Phytochemicals are a powerful type of antioxidant. So you could find them in... Uh, dark leafy greens like spinach and kale and then I brought you this too because exactly. I heard that you can actually so I'm a huge fan of Brussels sprouts oh these are Brussels sprouts and I think you're a fan of Brussels sprouts too right I love Brussels sprouts they're one of my favorites these are the right. things that get the bad bad rap but it's unjustified I agree I love them I agree if you've had one bad experience with them try again they're amazing and they're so good for you mm -hmm. and then colorful berries like blueberries and acai berries and whatnot so Antioxidants and phytochemicals are very important. Don't forget about them. For sure. And they come in tasty foods too, which is awesome. Yeah. Uh, okay, uh, <clears throat> another checkpoint real quick. See if you can describe three advantages of eating a more plant-based diet or just getting more plants in your, in your diet. Do you mean I should be a vegetarian? No, I don't mean you should be a vegetarian. If you want to be, you can. Um, that's totally healthy as well. There's healthy ways to be a vegetarian. However, what, you would, what I would probably recommend is you can eat meat, but just try and get enough vegetables. You want to have a, a plenty of vegetables in your diet. So we want to kind of finish this lecture off with a, just like the takeaways. First of all, this is what your plate kind of could look like if it was like a relatively healthy-ish com composition. So like you got protein taking up about this percentage of your meal, healthy fats over here, low glycemic carbs. So we're talking maybe like whole wheat bread instead of like white rice on the side. Mm -hmm. Like the bread I brought you. Yeah, exactly. And then notice huge portion of your plate is vegetables right there. So, and then on the side water, this should not be like a soda or another thing, not fruit juice. A lot of people think, oh, fruit juice, it's so good for you because it's fruit. You yeah. know what it is? It's just sugar water, to be honest. It's not that much better, if at all, than something like soda. So. And have you noticed that a lot of restaurants that you go to, instead of really putting the vegetables on your plate, the main item yeah. is the meat? That's, yeah, that's typical. That's sort of the typical American diet is more meat heavy. That's right. Um, which, remember, we want to be more vegetable heavy if we want to be really healthy. All right, so take home ideas. Number one, eat a variety of healthy foods every day and exercise regularly. Two important things. It's important. What do you mean by regularly? Um, I would say you want to try to shoot for like 150 to 200 minutes a week. Okay. So if you can get like about that much, maybe say half hour a day, half hour a day, or like three days a week, you're doing like an hour. Okay. Something like that. That's at least, fair. at least, that. that's a good good amount. Okay, so eat a lot of different colorful vegetables like we talked about, whole grains, and good sources of protein and fat. Nice. Avoid highly processed foods that are low in nutritional value, right? So what we mean by this are candies, chips, fried foods, sodas, you know, all the snacks that you, if you go down the snack aisle in the grocery store, most of that stuff you want to avoid. So is that what empty calories means? Yeah. Empty calories means food that is just giving you like calories, but not much nutrition. Okay. Like those gummy bears. Like those gummy bears are a perfect example. Okay. Yeah. And enjoy good food. Food's awesome. Yeah. We're both Super foodies. important. Yeah, enjoy it, but also know that there are times where you can eat something that's maybe not so great for you, but that, you know, to do it in moderation. Yeah, it's totally okay to have those, you know, cheat days every once in a while that's where right. you enjoy food because mm -hmm. it's important. You can't just avoid some of the pleasures in life. So Whether I, it's McDonald's or Taco Bell, or I wouldn't <laughs> yeah. recommend that. But Depends know, on what you, what's, what's your pleasure that you want to go for, I think. Yeah. But it's always important to remember to treat food... Um, as a source of nutrition, but also as a source of pleasure too. So, try, don't don't look. I, I don't. I hate when people look at food like, like, like a chore. Like, yeah. oh, I have to. I have to eat this way only. Yeah. But or takes away some counting stuff. calories and like, yeah. I've had this much today or whatnot. Yes. Yeah. Enjoy yeah. it. Enjoy it, but just be responsible and be mm -hmm. sort of a little bit of, a little bit of discipline too. Sometimes. Yeah.
All right. I agree. Now we have lots of fun facts for them, don't we? Yeah, so here's a, I want to just kind of have you guys some pause on this slide and just look at a bunch of different fun facts about food that we found that you might find interesting or things you didn't know. That's right. And then we want you to pick uh, one of these that surprised you the most or that you found the most interesting and write it down at the bottom of your skeleton notes. All right. Yeah. I think we better end this. You want to go make some dinner? Because I'm starving. Let's do it. All right. See you guys in class. Bye, everyone.